Greetings, and welcome to the MTI FX Advisor Charting Tutorial Archive. The intent of this archive is to maximize your potential as a trader by knowing how to best utilize the charting software that you use on a daily basis. In this series of videos, we will cover a range of topics pertaining to your MTI 4.0 software and its functionality. In this specific video, we will cover how to customize your MTI 4.0 software. Before we begin, let me fill you in on the topics that were covered in the previous lesson. The first topic that was covered was details of your login box. Next was the live feed options, followed by the connection status, and then creating a new chart, followed by deleting a chart, organizing charts, creating pages, and an introduction to your basic drawing tools, editing those drawing tools, your retracement tool, and editing that retracement tool. Now let's go ahead and get started with today's lesson. The first thing that I'd like to show you today is the chart options menu, which gives you the ability to customize the chart that we have up on the screen. First thing you need to do to open that chart options menu is click the MTI symbol on the upper left hand corner of each chart. Here, when we put our mouse over that symbol, it changes to a longer, smaller arrow. Once you click that arrow, your chart options box should come up. The very first thing in this chart option box that I would like to point out to you is the feature called bars in memory. Changing the amount of bars in memory will add or subtract the amount of 60 minute candles that we have on this specific chart, being that this is a GBP 60 minute chart. Seeing that I have 5,000 candles as the number of bars in memory currently, I would like to take away 3,000 and have only 2,000 for my analysis. In order to do so, you type in 2,000 in the bars in memory field and then click OK. This will take away 3,000 of the 5,000 bars that we had previously, thus leaving us with 2,000 bars in memory. In order to verify that that number has, uh, has stuck to this chart, you'll click the MTI symbol again and verify that the number it represented is 2,000. The next thing that I would like to cover is the, the option, uh, the live arrow color option. <clears throat> Here, you have the option to change the color of the live arrow that we show for the live market values. In order to change the color, you'll click the red box, which will open up the colors box. You can then change it to any desired color when you click OK, you should see that color represented as the change made on the screen. The next thing that I would like to show you is the background color feature, or the feature where we can change the color of the background. In order to do so, you'll click the gray box to the left of the word background color. When you click the gray box, it's going to open up the colors menu. And in this specific case, I would like the background to be green. Once you click OK, you should see the background represented as the color green. The next thing that I'd like to point out with you is changing the colors of the candles that we have on the specific chart. First off, I'd like to point out that up solid should not be checked, but down solid should be checked. Next, I'd like to show you bar up, bar down, and bar flat, the variations in the color changes. To change the color on bar up, you'll click the blue box directly below it, change it to any desired color, and then click OK. Once you've done so, you can also change the color of the bar down, which again, you'll click any desired color and then click OK. Once you've done so, you're going to click OK on the main screen of your chart options box to see the change represented on your chart. If, you're, uh, if you do not like the colors that you've chosen, you can always change them back or change the colors yet again to, spit any, or to fit any specific needs that you have. We're going to change the settings back to the defaults so that we can start this chart off fresh. <clears throat> the next thing that I'd like to show you is changing the, <clears throat> the hide countdown arrow over here on the bottom left hand side. As you can see, I have the hide countdown arrow checked. What I'd like to do is go ahead and uncheck this box to bring the live countdown back in. The live countdown is a countdown that signifies when the next candle will begin. In this case, we are showing 152 seconds until the next 60 minute candle is formed. This is an approximation of when the next candle will form and is not exact. 
The next thing that I'd like to cover with you is changing your horizontal and vertical grid lines. Currently, we have our charts defaulted with a horizontal and vertical grid. If you do not like or do not use the horizontal and vertical grids, you can uncheck the boxes and click OK to take away the grid lines that appear on the chart. If you do like the grids, you can always keep them checked. And if you are looking to put smaller grids on top of the already pre-existing grids, you can always check the minor grid box as well, which will bring in a minor grid as well as the major grid. The next thing that I'd like to cover with you is placing fonts onto a chart. In order to place a font onto a chart, you're going to click the ABC or the text tool on the left-hand side of your chart. Once you do so, a text box should appear on the screen. This is where you're going to type in your ABCDs to place on your chart. Here we have an A. And as you can see, when I put this A on the screen, it's far too small. So you can edit that A by right-clicking and selecting Edit. Then you go into Font, which opens up the Font Options box. Here you have the option for different font kinds, different font styles, as well as sizes and colors here on the bottom left-hand side. I'm going to change this to a size of 20 just to be a little easier on the eyes. Now, as you can see, when I look at this A on the chart, it's a lot easier to read. And we're going to continue to do that for all of the ABCDs that we work with here on this specific chart. Next, we'll type in a B and put it on the chart. There we have the B. Now we have an AB boundary. And again, if you don't like the size, style, color, or uh, appearance of, this, uh, of these letters, you can always right click, go to edit, you can click font, and you can change the font color. You can underline it, make it bold, italic, change the font uh, style, font size, the script, or uh, you can underline it and make it strike out as well. <clears throat> Okay, the next thing that I'd like to show you is the Utilities and Global Settings menu. First off, you have to click Utilities, then Global Settings to open the settings of global or open the Global Settings menu onto your chart. On this chart, we see a lot of the options that we saw on the Chart Options menu. The only difference between this box and the Chart Options menu that we were working with pr uh, prior is this box sets up the default values for when you open a new chart the chart options menu will only change whatever chart you're working on that specific chart. In this case, on the top, it shows us a number of bars in memory to use when creating a new chart. I have my charts defaulted to 1,000 bars in memory for each new chart that I create. If you'd like to change that number, you would type in your new number and then click OK to have that, ver uh, that value changed for each time you open a new chart. Also, make sure that you check the box that says Save Bars Numbers, otherwise it will always default back to 700. Within the box that says Candlesticks, we also have the option to change the colors of the candlesticks, as discussed uh, earlier in this presentation. Again, the difference between that Chart Options menu and this menu here is this will now change the default settings for the new charts, as the previous one only will change the settings on that chart. The next thing that I'd like to cover is the default settings of horizontal and vertical lines. Here, you can default the setting of the thickness and color when using horizontal and vertical lines. As you can see, I have my horizontal lines defaulted to the color black and a thickness of 2, where my vertical lines are de defaulted to black with a thickness of 1. Here, you can change those numbers to have those represented as the default setting for any time you use those tools. You also have the option of defaulting the background color of your chart as well as the thickness of each candle or each bar. Now, the next thing that I'd like to cover with you is the general tab. You'll see we have several different tabs on the top of this global settings menu, each of which hold different levels of importance. Chart options are going to give, give you default chart settings such as colors, fonts, text sizes, uh, horizontal and vertical line sizes, and uh, bars in memory, stuff like that. The general options is going to give you a little more in detail uh, options available. Here you'll see a list of different options available to you within our software. Crosshair thickness, 
drawings, font size thickness, as well as a few other options here on the right. Also, on the General tab, you have the option to reset your toolbars, which often, when using different toolbars, you may lose or accidentally uh, move one of your toolbars, and if you don't know how to fix that, you can always come in here to reset the values of each toolbar. Here, we also have the option for a price tag. The price tag is where we see the live market value for any specified currency. As you see, I have a yellow price tag with black numbers. You can also see that represented here. The color of my numbers are black with the background of yellow. In order to see that price tag, you must click the Show Price Tag box. Otherwise, it will not come up on the chart, as you can see here. The next thing that I'd like to cover is the Internet Options tab. In this Internet Options tab, you have the option of using a proxy server for your uh, LAN area connection. Here, in order to use a proxy server, first you must check the box that says Use a proxy server for your LAN. Next, you must type in an address, which is a series of numbers and decimals, followed by your port, which would be a series of numbers. If you're unsure of what a proxy is or how to use a proxy, you must contact your Internet service provider to find out more information. Next, I'd like to cover the sound and alarms box briefly. Uh, the sound and alarms box will give you the different options that you will use when creating and using alarms. On the top, you'll see there's different options as per how the alarms will work. If you want to show the alarms in a window, if you want them in a list, if you need the alarm to sound, and obviously if you want it to real-time tick sound. Also, you have the option of changing the sound, which will be covered in a later lesson. The next box that I'd like to show you, or tab if you will, is the Email Alarms tab. Now the Email Alarms tab will give you the option to send email alerts to a email address, cell phone, um, text messages, uh, instant messaging service, whatever it may be. In order to find out more detail about this specific tab, please refer to Lesson 4, which is the lesson on creating and using alarms. In closing, hopefully this video helps you along the way in developing your technical analysis and provides you with newfound confidence on your way to becoming a professional trader. As always, thank you for your time and have a great day.